Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Sven Bockland. I'm Director of Scientific Affairs at BioNano. And I want to welcome you uh, to our session on behalf of uh, the quite large BioNano crew uh, here today. We have two really exciting talks coming up. Um, you know uh, Bryn Levy, of course, as the uh, singer-songwriter. Uh, but you may not know that he's also Director of Cytogenetics at Columbia. Um, Bryn and uh, Rashmi Kanagal Shimana are going to talk about uh, some studies that they've performed using uh, bionanotechnology on hematological malignancies. But I'm going to start by telling you real quick what it is that we do and why uh, we do that, uh, just so they don't have to deal with explaining that. And I want to talk about uh, structural variation, of course, because that is what we detect. And if you're studying cancer genomes, you want to know the structure of these genomes. Uh, these complex rearrangements um, in sometimes heterogeneous samples. And for about 50 years or so now, uh, that's been done with cytogenetics, where you use some form of microscopy to look at patterns on intact DNA molecules to detect structural variation directly. Um, and, and these patterns, of course, are, are the type of bands that you see in that karyotype over there. When NGS came along, there was the promise that this could be automated and streamlined. But the problem with NGS, of course, is that they didn't bring a microscope. They brought a different tool. And now I challenge you to tell me how many pieces of kiwi there were and where in that bowl they were once I turned that blend around. But that's, of course, how an NGS library prep starts. There's another problem with NGS, of course, and that is that the genome is highly repetitive. Just about a third of a human genome consists out of unique sequences, and two-thirds consist of repeats. And if you look at these repeat classes, with the exception of one, every unit of these type of repeats are already longer than the read length of NGS. So putting complex arrays of these repeats together with 100 base pairs is just not possible, and that's why cytogenetics are still the gold standard to look at structural variation in genomes. And so what BioNano now does is it's really just the same thing that you see right here. We use a microscope to look at patterns on intact DNA molecules. But we add something to that. We add a nanochannel array. These are hundreds of thousands of channels that are so narrow that a single DNA molecule fits in these channels. We put a pattern on these molecules that are mega bases in length. And so think about the banding of the karyotype but with 500 million bands in a genome. So super high resolution banding. And we, we take these mega base size molecules, pull them into these channels, and then image them massively in parallel. Our microscope is called Sapphire. It's automated. Um, it's beautiful, and it does all the work for you. BioNano provides an entire workflow. We have the instrument. We also have the chips with the nano channels. And we have um, reagents for DNA isolation, labeling, and software to put all of this together. Now let me tell you real quick how it works. First, we start with uh, extremely long molecules, of course. The molecules that we image are on average 300 KB, but they go all the way up to about three megabase pairs. And of course, to get these long molecules, you need a very gentle, careful DNA isolation protocol. We have several protocols for that. I won't go into detail here. Um, but the requirements, the input requirements that we have are less than 650 microliters of fresh or frozen blood. We can work with EDTA and heparin blood. Also BMA, I forgot to put the uh, bone marrow aspirates on there. You can start with a million and a half cultured cells. We can work with up to 50 milligrams of fresh or frozen tissue. And everything we'll see, uh, what we'll, what we'll see today is on uh, hematological cancers, but we can work with solid tumors as well, as little as 10 milligrams, as long as they're not been FFPE treated, because of course then there is no long DNA. Once we isolate these long molecules, we label a specific six base pair sequence motif all throughout the genome, as I said, about 500 million sites that we label. This happens without any probes, but with a single enzymatic reaction. These labeled molecules are then uh, pulled into these nanochannels using electrophoresis. And that narrow width forces these molecules to be uniformly stretched. They cannot coil up on itself. And because of that, uh, an, a simple picture gives us the correct spacing of these labels on the molecules. 
We have a massive uh, nanochannel array, as I showed you before, and you can easily see how all these molecules sit in one of these channels. Uh, this is what it looks like when that DNA moves into these channels. You see the coils of DNA unwinding, going through pillars, uh, into these relaxation channels where they stretch out, and then they go into the nanochannels. And every horizontal line you see is a single molecule of double-stranded DNA. Now, we don't collect the data while the molecules move. We do that when they're paused. And uh, the instrument will cycle molecules in the channels, image them, and cycle new ones in over and over again. And that gives us the capability to run six human genomes per 24 hours at 100x coverage, which is uh, good for diploid genomes. Or you can collect as much as 400x or uh, 1,300 gigabase pairs of data on each of the three flow cells on a chip in less than 48 hours, uh, often much less than 48 hours. And we'll be increasing this throughput uh, later this year with a software update as well. Out of the images we collect, um, we create digital representations of the molecules, and then we pairwise align them to build a complete de novo assembly of the genome. A de novo assembly is, of course, important because if you have a highly rearranged cancer genome, uh, you don't want a reference to tell you where we think that that genome uh, should, what that should look like. Instead, we built a genome that is really there. And then we can call structural variants simply by comparing these patterns with each other or with a reference uh, of your choice. And by doing so, we can detect every major type of structural variation. On the left, uh, we have deletions and insertions, which we call automatically genome-wide, starting at 500 base pairs. We can look at repeat expansions or contractions for large repeats like FSHD, but also for um, a, a standard uh, repeat expansion disorder, uh, for example. We detect tandem duplications starting at 30 KB. We detect translocations, balanced or unbalanced, and inversions as well, as long as we see a pattern of about 30 KB that just flipped around. Now, independent of these maps, we also have a copy number tool that works a little bit like a, a copy number detection with NGS or with Array. We simply count the molecules that align to each part of the genome and normalize that. And that gives us the capability to detect these large copy number variants down to just about 10% allele fraction. With a rare variant pipeline that looks at single molecules, we can now dive down uh, deep into these heterogeneous tumor samples and detect every major type of structural variant down to 5% allele fraction. 5% allele fraction for translocations, inversions, deletions, duplications, um, fusion genes with any fusion partner, completely unbiased, genome-wide. There's no one else that can do this or comes even close to this performance. And then last, I want to plug uh, Genox, our uh, software partner. They have a booth here as well. And they build a tool that will take BioNanos SV calls and use NGS data and combine that so that our SV calls guide the alignment of the NGS reads and, in a sense, create a new sequencing technology that has the single base pair resolution of Illumina with the SV detection of BioNano. Uh, go talk to them if you want to know more. I have one story I want to tell you because our speakers are mostly, um, um, well, clinical cytogenetics focused. Um, this is a discovery story, really, uh, from Jim Broach, who's director of personalized medicine at Penn State, and he looked at a dozen or so leukemia genomes using BioNano and NGS. What he's showing in his paper is examples like this, where in a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, the T cells uh, show just a small deletion, but the lymphoma cells at a three megabase inversion, uh, which cuts right through the P10 gene here. And that's just an example of a gene that is not traditionally studied in leukemia, but yet there's a dozen or so trials going on for compounds that rescue P10 mutations, and this was not picked up with NGS or with a karyotype. And this paper shows a large number of uh, genes with recurrent structural variants in leukemia driver genes, which makes sense, but also in uh, a large number of other cancer-associated genes, which are not routinely checked in leukemia. So there's a lot of information there that you're missing out if you're not using a genome-wide tool that can detect these structural variants. Other genes not cancer associated in the past see recurring structural variants with our technology as well. So there's a, an enormous potential for discovery of biomarkers there or uh, therapeutic or prognostic uh, genes. On top of that, they're seeing a large number of structural variants near uh, cancer-associated genes 
within a five megabase pair region. And again, those could be uh, new discoveries of genes and, and, and structural variants uh, that we just don't understand yet. Uh, we have a webinar that he presented that's recorded on our, uh, and that you can see on our website. There's also a transcript of this webinar that's in all of your conference bags, so check that out. I want to finish by pointing you to uh, two more things. Uh, Laila El Katabi from the Cochin Hospital in France did a study comparing bionano against cytogenetics for developmental uh, disease and uh, infertility cases. Uh, it's a spectacular results, and that presentation is recorded, and you can find it at BioNano U, uh, which is our blog. Um, you can see that right here on our website. And uh, there's a presentation from Alex Hoijen from Radboud University in the Netherlands as well, who looked at, uh, at both cancer and uh, constitutional cases, about 35 or so genomes with BioNano. Uh, great presentation as well. He's presenting a webinar September 18. You see these little cards on your desk, so you can just sign up for that by pointing your camera at that code, and it magically works. And um, we also have a clinical research symposium the day before ASHG. So come one day early to Houston and join us for a day of presentations on everything from AML to FSHD and a lot more.